Welcome, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so today um, we've been previously looking at the inside edges and the benefits of that in our dancing. Um, I find many dancers are really scientifically minded and it helps them sometimes to hear the science behind why we're doing what we do and not just do it this way. Because every part of that technique book is there for a reason to make your dancing more powerful, give you more control, make you lighter in his arm, help you telegraph a more clear lead to her. So we're gonna talk about some engineering structures today and how that applies to your dancing. And this will have to do with Newton's third law of motion. So we're gonna zoom in on a little diagram here and then we'll talk about what we're seeing. And then I'll show you with the partner how that actually works while we're dancing, how that applies to our dancing. Okay, so we're looking at three types of architecture today. Okay, we have a structure with a flat top. And as you can see, all of the force bears down on the top and that puts a huge pressure down here. So this can fail. This is why you never see a bridge that's dead flat. It's built this way, this way. The next most stable structure is the arch. So as you can see, there is some force going down, depending on the radius of the arch, but it in large part relies on the compression loading of the stones against each other and then spreads out all of that weight across the base. So this structure can hold exponentially more weight with less strength than this structure. Now you'll find um, in engineering, the more weight you want the arch to bear, the more narrow you want your radius to be. So a big wide dome cannot hold as much weight as an itty bitty skinny one. So we take that to the extreme. What is kind of the most narrow arch you could build? Well, that would actually be this vault, okay? So let's think about this historically. We're gonna look at three structures. This is your Parthenon with the flat roof. These are your Roman aqueducts with the arches. This is part of the Great Pyramids of Giza. This is not the outside of the pyramid. That's a different thing going on there. This, there's an inside little hollow vault on the very, very bottom of that bad boy. And that vault is what holds the Pharaoh's tomb. So if you see a video on TV, it looks like a flat roof, but the actual structure in there holding this thing up is a vault with a little false roof above his tomb. So historically, if we look back on these structures, this one is about 5,500 years old. Yeah, it's looking pretty good, but guess what? The ceiling's fallen in. If we look at the Roman aqueducts, well, those are holding up better. And those are over 2,000 years old. What's holding up the best at 4,500 years is that little vault, the bottom of the pyramid, holding the Pharaoh's remains, okay? And if you think about it, this is holding exponentially more weight than the Parthenon or the aqueducts. If you're looking at the biggest pyramid um, of Cheops or sometimes known as Khufu, that bad boy is almost six million pounds of stone compressed on that itty bitty hollow bolt. 
Guarantee if that thing was built with a flat top, we would have crushed his body literally in seconds. Probably all the workers in there, okay? Um, so in our dancing, we want to have this vault action and not this flat top. How do we do that? Okay, let's zoom out. We're gonna look at my feet. This is your Parthenon flat. This is your arch. It's better, more stable. This is your vault, by far the most stable. And my vault does not come from up here like it would with a solo body with a partner. My vault comes from my knees, okay? Now we've been talking about edges of feet. This is how this applies to this last concept we talked about last week. My knees only naturally bend this way, unless you're a total freak of nature. My joints actually don't go this way, so I can't do it with my knees. Otherwise, ladies, if your coach tells you your butt's out, that's your problem, okay? If I use my edges, the knees can come together and I don't have my big giant butt sticking out. This is for me not a part of my body I want to emphasize anyway and it hangs on your partner. So edge, low vault. Now I'm going to show that functionally with a partner just so you can see how this works well with your dancing. Okay, so we're going to my model. Right now we're going to do our Parthenon stance. We're on flat feet and we're just going to rotate so you can see how functionally it works for dancing bronze. It's not hideous. We can even have our head in the correct quadrant. But this is not going to end up with good speed of rotation. It's going to have horrible flight. It's going to pull on your partner, leads you to shove on your partner. So now we're gonna show our low vault. So we're gonna be connected to that one knee, both of us with the partner. Now it's not like a vice-like grip on him, but it's definitely a gentle vault. So now we're gonna rotate again. We both have our vaults to each other and we're doing emphasize edges. This is gonna be much easier and lighter to connect and rotate and travel than this. Okay, show the edges, 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 okay? So, um, if you're not scientifically minded, scrap that last video and go to last week's video. But this is another way for those of you who might be a little more mechanically inclined in the way you learn to visualize um, the mechanics behind that connection to your partner. So, thanks for joining me. See you next week. Doodles!